In this video, we will discuss how to identify an appropriate measurement system that is aligned to the behavior dimension of interest used in evaluating whether a functional assessment-based intervention is effective. The reason we collect behavioral data is to accurately measure behavioral performance, which is necessary for many reasons, including accurately measuring baseline levels of behavior, as well as objectively determining effectiveness of any intervention effort. We will use a single case design, which we'll discuss more thoroughly in the video on step five, testing the intervention. Behavior has several different dimensions. It is necessary to first identify the behavioral dimension that is of interest before you can select an appropriate measurement system. Behavior has at least six dimensions. These are frequency, rate, duration, latency, topography, locus, and force. Frequency refers to the number of responses in which the behavior occurred. Think count. Frequency is the dimension of interest you want to, when you want to know how many times something occurs, such as the, num the number of times a student answered a question correctly. Whereas rate refers to a ratio or, ratio or count per observation time and is calculated by dividing the number of responses by the total observation time. So if I was interested in knowing the, num the rate of correct responding, I would count the number of correct answers on a student's math fact sheet and divide that number by the time it took that student to complete the sheet. So count of nine correct answers during a 10 minute work block would equal a rate of 0.9 per minute. A second possible dimension is duration or how long a behavior lasts. Duration is a good dimension of interest when measuring a behavior that a person is engaging in for too long or for too short of a time. For duration, you can measure the total duration of an entire observation session. For example, the student was out of his seat for 43 minutes in a 60 minute window. Or duration per occurrence, such as the student was out of his seat for an average of 3.07 minutes over 14 instances. A third possible dimension Latency refers to the amount of time it took for a behavior to occur or to be initiated. Latency is a good dimension when you are interested in the length of time between when a behavior is requested, the stimulus, and when it actually begins, the response. For example, wanting to know how long it takes for a student to begin writing after the teacher explains the writing task and asks the student to begin. A fifth possible dimension, topography, refers to what a behavior looks like, or more specifically, its shape and form. For example, you may be interested in the letter writing skills of a student's cursive or the form of one's bat swing. A fourth possible dimension, locus, refers to where the, where the behavior occurs, that is, its location or context. This may be of interest when you want to know where a behavior is or is not occurring. For example, does this child eat in the cafeteria, in the hallway, or on the playground? A final dimension, force, refers to the strength or intensity of the behavior. For example, does the child scream or speak softly? More specifically, does the child speak loudly enough to be heard from a distance of 5 feet or 20 feet? What about from across the playground? Once the behavioral dimension has been identified, it is important to select a measurement system that is well aligned to its dimension. To begin the selection process, you must first ask yourself, does the performance of the behavior take about the same length of time as every other time? If so, the behavior is uniform. Examples of uniform behavior include talking out of turn, cussing, or swearing. Non-uniform behaviors, on the other hand, refer to behaviors that vary in length. Examples of non-uniform behaviors include being off-task or wandering around the room. This information is helpful as measurement systems are derived between two groups, event-based and time-based. Event-based measurement systems tend to be well aligned for measuring uniform behaviors and include gathering permanent products, frequency, frequency recording where you count the number of times the behavior was observed in a session and convert to rate when possible, or rating the intensity or magnitude in which the behavior was performed. Time-based measurement systems tend to be well aligned for measuring non-uniform behaviors such as duration or latency recording, interval recording, or time sampling. Interval recording and momentary time sampling are flexible and provide useful data. Across these systems, an observation, is period, an observation period is divided into equal intervals and observations are recorded for each interval. In partial interval recording, a behavior is marked for occurring in that interval if the behavior occurred at all at any time point during the interval. Whereas in whole interval recording, a behavior is marked for occurring 
in the interval if the behavior occurred during the entire length of that interval. For example, if I was observing for 15 minutes and each interval lasted 30 seconds, and in the second interval I observed that the behavior of interest for only occurred for 5 seconds, I would indicate that no occurrence of that behavior occurred for that whole interval. Whereas in partial interval recording, I would have recorded that the student demonstrated the behavior of interest partially during that interval. Momentary time sampling, on the other hand, is a recording system where you record whether the behavior is occurring at the moment that each interval ended. In a 15-minute observation, using a one-minute interval, I would record whether the behavior was occurring at the end of each one minute. There are a number of different devices that can be worn at the waist or the wrist and apps that are available to assist you in recording interval recording systems such as these. Across interval recording and momentary time sampling systems, data are most often reported as percentage of total intervals in which the target behavior was scored as occurring. Partial interval recording has a tendency to overestimate behavior, so you may consider this system for behaviors you want to decrease, such as off-task behavior. Whole interval recording has a tendency to underestimate and should be considered for behaviors you want to increase, such as academically engaged time. It is important to consider your goal for the behavior you are measuring. Is your goal to increase or decrease the behavior? The answer to this question will inform your selection of appropriate measurement systems. The topics in this video offer a very brief introduction to behavioral dimensions and some measurement systems. For more in-depth coverage, you may read Applied Behavior Analysis, Second Edition by Cooper, Heron, and Heward, 2007, and Functional Behavior Assessment and Function-Based Intervention, An Effective, Practical Approach by Umbright, Farrell, Leopson, and Lane, 2007. You may also look at examples available on the CI3T website and the IRIS Center headquartered at Vanderbilt University in Nashville, Tennessee, and Claremont Graduate University in Claremont, California.